There you go. That's it. That's beauty. it. That's beauty. I'm a sound engineer now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Happened just like that. Um, you probably did a longer course than some of the sound engineers I know. Um, well, the government's right. A, don't need TAFE. Bit of a personal <laughs> stab to the sound engineers that I know out there. <laughs> All of you go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Sucked in, dickheads. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, I've got to pull this beer. And look, if you need to take a piss break, take a piss break. Cool. Um, if I need to go get more beer because we end up drinking all of it, I'll go get you it. You will need to get more beer. <laughs> no, I've got some here. Oh, I've, got, they, I've, got, I've got a stash. Oh, no. Nice. But sometimes, in some episodes, you drink the stash. And it's not it's not anyone's fault. <laughs> <laughs> it's just something that fucking happens, man. Like, I no, no judgment to anyone who doesn't finish a stack. But I've got quite a few beers back here. Oh, beauty. Um, it's more to the people that are finishing the beers. Because <laughs> if, if you, like, we, well, we've drunk together plenty of times now. Yeah. Um, and we, I generally go continuously. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I generally do. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's no real stop. No. Like, I've, I've always been horrible like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah I'll just... Yeah, I don't have a drink. That means I'm in line for one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I, know, I was thinking about this the other day, though. Um, you know, is that a good thing? If I come to a point in my life where time has become more available, mm. like, um, I, I'm, you know, I'm such a party animal yeah. that um, any spare moment you had, like, when you're off the clock and not working... Mm. You're getting, you're going for it. Absolutely. Yeah. But what happens when you get more time? If you end up with a whole bunch of time, then you're just fucking off your head all the time. And <laughs> we know people like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can be a person like that. But yeah, I, same. Yeah. I'm just, um, I don't know. I've come to a point in my life where I realise that uh, no, I've got so much shit going on. I've got to, um, you know, sometimes say no to a smoke and go. I've got work to do. Yeah. But I always come back to it though. I, th I think it's. Um, it's the same with the alcohol, man. Mm. Staying lightly drunk. I recommend that. <laughs> <laughs> Some fear and loathing shit. Just yeah. like microdosing beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, microdose your beer, man. You'll have a better life. Ooh. Mm. 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 Oh, that's yeah, good. I've, I've started like mashing my drinking up with other things to save time. Yeah. So if I've got time off, I'll be like, I'll have a paint, but I'll also do it absolutely fucking shit-faced. Mm. And well, I remember, I remember when I was younger um, and getting high um, and you'd either get drunk or get high. Yeah. And if you were already drunk... You didn't smoke weed because it would fucking put you on your ass, as the yeah, old saying goes. That. Yeah, the, do you remember back then? Yeah, everyone was like, "Oh no, you can't. Do, that's poison if you do that." Yeah, yeah <laughs> it will fuck you up. Yeah. And then I did it a few times, and don't get me wrong, I got fucked up. Yeah, but uh, you know, you know, whiting out or greening out. You know, I suppose you white out because you haven't been drinking, and you smoke too much weed. Yeah, and you green out because you've had too much to drink and you smoke some weed. Yeah. And it's, either which way you're throwing up. I think it's from the ill humours in your body, and then you have to get sprayed with like a fire hose at <laughs> hospital to get rid of it, and then you're okay. Yeah, well, that's just they call that detox. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what they told me. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Doctor Roscoe's detox. Yeah. <laughs> K -k -k yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, shit indeed, man. Yeah. I like these, uh, these, this is what you call a zero seg. Yeah. A zero segment. Because we haven't started the show yet, so. Yeah. Right, it's a zero segment. You get a, whew, right? But, um, I think I've almost finished a beer during our zero segment. But no, we, no, no, that's unfair. We did, we started as I was working. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mentally started drinking this beer before I got here. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've got a day off. I'm thirsty. <laughs> Yeah, days off, man. <laughs> fucking love those. I haven't had many. Yeah. Yeah, fuck, you've had heaps going on, man. Well, admittedly. No, but here's the thing. It's not like, don't get me wrong, there are moments where you go, fuck. But most of it, and that's only like, that, 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 fuck. Because it's such a loud, you know, um, guttural vocal that it resonates through everything and it has a really loud voice, but essentially it only makes up 10% of your experience. Yeah. Another 90% you're fucking stoked, you know, working on things and pushing deadlines and meeting those deadlines and then looking at the fruits of your labour. Yeah. Like you, just, you see a lot of that. 
I, I don't know, man, man. This is an interesting point. Like, I see a lot of that through the analytics of social media. So, you know, I... I look at um, uh, analytics. Yeah, I remember you showing me that shit. That was fucking insane. Mm. Like the the amount. Like and, like I, you showed me that right after I watched that documentary they put on Netflix about like social media and stuff. Oh, the uh, social dilemma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like just seeing like how yeah it does like it's carved up all these really specific things and mm. shit. As yeah, say you could you just had your phone in the middle of the pub, just like oh look at all this stuff. <laughs> like what the fu- yeah it was crazy yeah man yeah you can look at that they that's the attributes and stuff that they give you mm. imagine what they've got imagine what their analytics look like like an admin analytics for youtube imagine what that looks like they know what you look like naked for sure yeah totally <laughs> it's just, totally it's just like this lawn mower man type cgi of you naked yeah <laughs> we, yeah we've garnered this from your posts we know yeah yeah they've cre- they've done a 3d they've done a digital 3d print of you yeah <laughs> work that out kids <laughs> what do you know it's in digital I don't know. yeah i know i get it <laughs> Oh, yeah, um, man. I think I'm almost ready. Even though I'm like breaking a sweat, like um, I think I'll do it. I'll do a beer refill. Yeah. I reckon. I, I totally think I might just let the whole thing roll from the start anyway, <laughs> and just put the start in later. This has been a good start. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah. Well, we'll just um, let's kick off the show. Okay. Okay. Um, hello and welcome to the Pager Train. Um, Thank you very much, young man. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. <laughs> Um, I've got Scotty B, um, otherwise known as... A general pie-faced lout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always call you Scotty B. Yeah. That's, that's what I always call you. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, no, uh, welcome to the show. Um, it's good to have you on the show. Uh, it's been a while uh, coming yeah. to get you on the show. Uh, but I just need to say to my listeners out there, um, uh, you guys have been pestering me. I haven't uh, put out an episode in a couple of weeks. I've just been really busy. Uh, and you're my you're my rebound girlfriend on my podcast tonight. I fucking like that. <laughs> <laughs> Means we can get dirty, you know what I mean? <laughs> didn't even bring my tassels, man. Yeah, didn't even bring them. Fuck. <laughs> oh, well, we'll have to do without them. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, Segu- I like that you can hear like the clinking from the stash through the the earphones. It's like- yeah, yeah, you need that. Well, that's, that's all a part of the experience, right? Locked in. <laughs> We're locked in, man. We're locked in. There's no escape. It's like the type of ambient noise I could go to sleep to. Like- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they do that on the internet, though. Yeah, man. They, they do that. I'm right into that shit. There's people that like eat pickles and shit. <laughs> on mics for soothing sounds oh, that's fu- yeah that's cool um but um you you are a an artist a sketch artist yeah a painter yeah is, is that an accurate way to describe things that you do yeah general doodling uh, yeah. doodling yeah well, like painting and, and drawing and stuff but I, it's all under the doodle umbrella i'd imagine <laughs> There's an umbrella for doodles? Yeah, it must be, it must be. <laughs> well, I did go to Ark once, and I'm pretty sure there was an umbrella in there. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Outrageous. <laughs> yeah, man, um, but yeah, no, I've been on, uh, yeah, so my hiatus, I've returned, I've returned uh, with, a, um, a, 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 with a painter, a sketcher, and someone I uh, talk absolute shit with um, yeah. in, a, uh, in a pub environment. Um, <laughs> any environment, really, just mainly the pub, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, so uh, recent events, um, what do you reckon? Go. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Ooh, I'm drinking inappropriately. Oh, shit. Yeah, no, I'm supposed to be pouring this beer. <laughs> I'm totally drinking on the show. I've killed everything. Everything is dead. Uh, man. Thank yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, no, but, um, yeah, uh, so, um, uh, to come back to it, um, because I've got sidetracked there. Um, <laughs> what is it that you draw, man? What do you draw? What do you draw? Um, I don't know. Nowadays, it's just, um, I suppose, like a, a mix-up of... Just anything, really. Like it's really aimless. Aimless. <laughs> it's very aimless. It's more like it's it's morphed into this just this drinking hobby now, or when I've got some spare time, just as a hobby. I used to be really serious about it when I was younger, mm. um, but now it's just kind of whatever. 
Yeah, okay. Um, so, what about looking at it this way? Like, um, so, do you, is it an outlet? Is yeah. Is something you do as an outlet? Yeah, yeah, pretty as, much. As expressionism? Yeah. Uh, For it's, yourself? Like, it's intrinsically, like, something I've done since I was, like, a, a very small kid. Mm. Like, my mum has this awesome story. Apparently, I was, like, maybe two or three. Mm. And she had these awesome... She had these awesome wax crayons. Mm-hmm. And we're living in her boyfriend's house at the time. And she went in the kitchen. She came back. And the entire carpet is covered in, like, wax crayons. Mm. Like, the whole thing. And I'm like, what did you do? She's like, I couldn't yell at you. It was really pretty. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Wuss. (laughs) I would have have belted me. And then after that, like, she just... Like, she just kept buying me shit, like, every birthday, every Christmas, and then other relatives every birthday and Christmas. Mm. I'd do, like, things, like, in the like the primary school newsletter and stuff like that. Oh, yeah? That's <laughs> so pretty it's, cool. Yeah, so it's, 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 yeah it's, it's always been, like, kind of an outlet. Just, mm. like, yeah. So it's, 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 it's a way for you to interact with the world and a way to, like, be vulnerable with the world. Mm. If that makes sense, like yeah, totally. I'm a fa- I'm a fairly guarded person a lot of the time, mm. and pretty quiet, unless I've got a f- couple of beers. Yeah, a couple your of beers down range. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your Jaxi. <laughs> butt chugging. Yeah, butt chugging. <laughs> it's on the internet. Totally, totally happens. <laughs> uh, I don't mean that sarcastically. No, it totally happens. Um, butt chugging, chugging. I'm, I'm gonna look it up now. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure there's butt chugging out there. <laughs> pretty sure. I got, I got scattered memories of um, uh, past internet um, uh, experiences where people are showing you cruel material on the internet. You know, when someone yeah. goes, "Have a look at this, man," you're like, "No, man, I don't uh, want to see yeah. that." Yeah. And then you're like, "All right, show it to me." Then. All it's right. It's like looking at the sun. You're like, "Ow, ow!" I can't stop looking at it. Mm. Yeah, no, it's terrible. It's terrible. I think we've gone through all these different ways, man. Like, I don't think, like, we don't know what we're in. And um, I've been saying this for a while. Like, I remember, um, oh, well, it, it's what when I was doing communications um, for study, it's what sort of spawned me on, was, um, or spurred me on, I should say, egged me on, got me going, <laughs> uh, was um, um, uh, uh, McLuhan, Marshall McLuhan. Not Marshall gonna, McLuhan. Marshall McLuhan. Uh, he used to say that uh, medium is the message. So mm. you've got the, the TV era. Yeah. That would um, uh, be the message itself. You know, you'd have a TV president, you know, and, yeah. a t- and everything is based around TV. And prior to TV, it's all based around radio. Yeah. And then it was based around film, you know, li- watching films in a, in, a, in a place that you go and pay a ticket to. And that's where newsreels come from. Yeah. You know, like there's the a whole Nickelodeon. Yeah. 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 That's right. Um, and they would have different bits of content in a presentation. And you go in there in different day, uh, times of the day and it was air conditioning. There was different invites into that. And that, that was the message yeah. in that medium. And that has changed now to the internet. The internet is the medium. Which is a confusing terrain to traverse. <laughs> it is so different from its predecessors. Yeah. So different. It's convers- the, the spheres have merged. And uh, another crazy thing this dude said was like, we're the sex organs of um technology <laughs> yeah shit that's, so you, that's pretty on point yeah so if you think about it if we create a, a sentient being yeah where we are its sex organs yeah and if you make it better than us then we are definitely it's it's means of procreation until it figures out how to do it itself yeah well, I've, I, I, absolutely mm. i don't know like I see with my little brothers and sisters and stuff because they're they're much older. There's this massive gap, and like they kind of grew up with the internet. Mm. Digital and, natives. Yeah, and mm. and like people around my age, we were half in, half out of it. Had like porn on floppy disks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That? How ironic. I'm, where do you watch your porn on a floppy disk, man? <laughs> Well, it, it at least starts off on a floppy disk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it ends up on a hard drive. That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, it's, and it's interesting to, like, see all these different artists in different mediums. Mm. Like, you know, the way we talk about it is that we're using all this technology and the internet and social media uh, to, like, further our, our own stuff. That's our platform. Mm. But it's not really. Like, it's so oversaturated 
mm. because it's so connected to everyone and everyone uses it and it's just it's this it's this given that like yeah you use the internet for like everything and so it's such an oversaturated market that we're not really finding a, pa- a platform for anything that we're doing mm. and the people that yeah, do fine, like the, the people that do are either lucky um, or, or some, the majority of them are just really samey mm. which, which is cool uh, mm. like it's everything's always changing and mm. uh, just because we don't get it doesn't mean that it's it's bad yeah i suppose i don't know but there's certainly part of me that um if i could do away with social media at the moment there's a part of me that goes yeah i totally would yeah um if i wasn't doing uh the festival i'd i'd totally totally do away with it and not doing the podcast i'd totally do away with it i've reduced my social footprint online quite significantly yeah i've I've noticed yeah i don't do i don't know i just feel weird i just feel weird um, going through this journey where you start sharing your opinions online and then sharing your personal life online. And then in the background of that, I was always trying to, you know, I was doing my side hustles and, and you know, running, uh, trying to run a business, mm. essentially. And the business at the moment is all that remains. I, I guess it's just a platform where I say happy birthday to people, you know. Man, exactly. <laughs> 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 that is like the main thing that you use it for is like whose birthday is it and mm. have I been invited to a party mm. uh, and then like I'm the same I'm like oh, I'd, you know, I've, I'd like to try to just get out of using it so much mm. Yeah, but you get like caught up in it mm. like I, I share opinions way too often mm. and, and, and like engage with other people's opinions way too often and mm. it's, you're watching yourself do it you're like what the fuck and i wonder if that's because we didn't grow up with it like that we're like ill gross what are we doing well there's these terms they have for for these things now you know when you type something have you ever typed um into a social media post mm. and then you go no i won't say that and yeah like every second beer yeah 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 you're like oh that's that's over the top people are going to judge me for yeah. that i'm not going to say that yeah and you have this second thought about it mm. and there's there's different type of um, people out there some people um write it and forget it just write it and forget it yeah you know and i i used to be someone that used to read a lot of comments and then i'd get involved in conversations and i realize all the energy that i'm putting into that yeah i go wow i could, I could use that elsewhere or use it differently, at least. And, uh, yeah, I just... I don't know, I just find it... The more and more I started typing things, the more and more I started going, no, nah, I'm not going to say that. And then you go, I just don't want to engage in that conversation online. Yeah. And then I just started reading them because I like watching train wrecks, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. You like, I, I will comment on something if it's a horrible conversation that mm-hmm. people are having just so I can... Like, I'll just put one comment so I keep getting notifications like, oh, what did this person... <laughs> Like I, I, there was some guy a couple couple of weeks ago, and he had this really public breakup with his girlfriend, and they're mm. they're both really weird cats, man. Uh, and then, so it was this this really really gross, dirty breakup, and and I'm like, oh why why am I following this? Uh, but I had to. Uh, if I wasn't doing that, I'd I'd be watching like Maury Povich and people being upset and screaming on that. I don't know. Fucking Mopo. Yeah. <laughs> Mopo. Yeah, that's the name of his. Co- that's the name of his company, man. No shit. Yeah, it's called Mopo. That's excellent. So you know when you watch um, um the playoffs or the you know the um logo playoffs for television programs where you go, um uh shh um their one was um what are we talking about again? I've lost it now. I've Mopo. That Mopo. If you put Mopo, um, yeah, if you listen, if you watch the end of Maury Polvich, yeah, comes up with his company name. And it's a pink and um, turquoise letter, and it's mo. What horrible colours! Yeah, man. So, <laughs> so like, think eighties kitsch with a in a you know James Belushi movie comedy, the colour of the car and the the chick's dress, and then you've got it. It's, yeah, it's it's not a good pairing. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's uh, yeah mopo. Um, yeah, but they, those guys just all high actors, eh? Hey? Mopo's all actors, spring, uh, Springer. Yeah. Essentially, it's just um, verbal wrestling. 
Yeah, well, like, apart from the, like, the pay-per-view mm. Jerry Springer, I remember my friend in high school would get it, and you'd know that those ones, like, you'd think, oh, we'll get that because we're in high school, we're going we're to get to see some tits or something. Mm. But that wasn't the draw. The draw was people would just run, they'd go, introduce someone, instead of walking on a stage, they would just run and hit someone in the face, and you're like, that's obviously a real one because that's mm. what you'd do if you were invited onto Jerry Springer and walk down the stage and see your girlfriend. You're like, I'm punching whoever the fuck is in front of me. Like, like, <laughs> <laughs> this guy just gorilla fucked your girlfriend. <laughs> oh! Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, and that was a strange show. But that's a bit... See, that's interesting we bring that up, though, because that's very much like the post on social media, man. Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're, I think there's a correlation between those two yeah. things. You're, you're, like, inflicting outrage on yourself. Mm. Like, this manufactured outrage. This isn't your... You have no dog in this fight. Mm. Like, but I'm going to follow the shit out of it and get mm. really grumpy about it. Yeah. And let people know what I reckon. Yeah, outrage. Yeah. Yeah, outrage porn. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, well, that's what um, the news is as well. You go through the news, it's all about uh, clicks and uh, getting us outraged. Um, look at Cambridge Analytica and everything they did, you know, uh, manipulating the courses of elections, fucking with democracy, yeah. fucking with capitalism, fucking with um, uh, the, uh, even socialists, man. Because they they tra that traffic goes back the other way as well. Yeah, absolutely. They, they, um, everyone's just fucking with everyone. And we're in this thing, we don't know what it is. That's what I mean. It comes back to Marshall McLuhan, man. Yeah. And this Marshall McLuhan idea is that we... Hey, well, they, what I get from it, I don't know if this is what he meant, but this is what my interpretation is of, um, of his stuff, is that we're the proto-cyborg, you know. Yeah. The phone in our hand, um, I believe, is going in. Yeah. Like at one point, the phone is going to go in us. Oh, of course. Like, people would line up for it. I might even. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I'd totally... I would go the, you know, the neural link shit, man. I'd be in for that. <laughs> you know, you think a, think a text message and boop, you know, send it off. Why not? <laughs> Look, if I could, like, catalogue my comic books and just keep it on a chip up mm. there... Sign me up. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> someone, yeah, you go into a, you know, uh, what used to be a video store and someone shoots you in the head with a laser and gives you an episode of Seinfeld. Just what? really violently. <laughs> just from, <laughs> like, a ghillie suit behind, like, the, the shitty DVDs. Bam. Mm. Yeah. 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 It's very, yeah. <laughs> I'll get the neural link. Why not? Yeah. yeah I, I th like, think, like, the horrible part about all this stuff is, like, we... Like we're not, Jesus. like we're living, we're we're living in this age where it is like it's an essential tool, uh, and, and for like lots of good stuff and stuff that we need it for. Yeah, it's intended uh, but purpose. We, but yeah, we haven't really been taught how to use it, and you can tell because we're all fucking toddlers on the internet. Mm. Everyone, like from every facet of it, like from marketing, uh, you know, procuring services, uh, and any anything, just social media. Even we're all mm. fucking toddlers. You can tell we've not been taught how to use it. We've just had this thing given to us that has unlimited potential, relatively. Yeah, well, if you think if, if, if you had that in the eighties, you would have a supercomputer yeah. in your hand. Yeah, you would have a computer that would constitute an entire building. Yeah, those are wacky. In your hand. Yeah. Like, and, and uh, this is something that if you link them all together and get it to solve algorithms, it could, like, cure cancers, right? Yeah. This is how smart this network is. It can these, if you link this um, network together, and they've done this before with people's PCs, they need more computing power. So you can link into different networks that are trying to solve um, big algorithmic problems and you add to the web of... They've um, done it with apps as well. Like yeah. games, like you'll download this app that's a game and you'll help to like sequence, you know, different viruses and shit like mm. that, which is super cool. And you do it for a week. It's like Wii Fit. You're like, oh, I'm sick of it. Yeah, yeah. I don't, need <laughs> I don't want to help anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just mapping the human genome. Fucking boring, man. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking boring. Um, but, yeah. Poindexter. <laughs> but, you know, we got this... Uh, but what do we, you know, what do we do with it? You know, we we, we, um, uh, we take selfies. Um, yeah. We um, play Candy Crush, you know. There's, a, there's all this misuse of it. I know, is that misuse? I don't know. So I think it's slack to say, but then there's part of you that goes, man, well, what are we fucking doing here? But a lot of it's really benign, but it's just an absolute fucking waste of the potential of it mm. uh, and and it, like that whole way it is changing like neural pathways and shit like mm. you know 
it seems pretty benign to just take a selfie uh, now and then or whatever but then like you start you start thinking in in selfies and chucking a post up of what you reckon yeah that's mm. okay and then you start thinking in posts like something happens in you know, real life and you're thinking like you're, you're in a dialogue mm. is like a fucking status update and shit mm. so that yeah like all these benign things end up being malignant mm. it's kind of scary yeah and metastasizing and going fucking ballistic and just taking down the whole condition yeah I don't know. There, there, there is one comparison I did draw. Um, uh, I can't remember what I was reading that did this. Um, but uh, I think it was the Victorian era where they come up with mirrors, hand, you know, vanity mirrors. Yeah. You know, hold onto a mirror. They figured out how to put um, a silver compound in glass production to make a mirror. Yeah. Like a proper mirror. And they can fix that into a little frame. And voila, you've got a vanity mirror where you could look at yourself mm. all day. Like, and why wouldn't you? No, but yeah, yeah, but that's it. But prior to that, like seeing your own reflection would take a body of water at the right conditions of the day. Yeah, that's kind of wacky. You'd yeah. ne no one ever saw themselves. Yeah. And at one point, we started having mirrors, and we saw ourselves. Mm. And I think there's a relationship between that and you know the the iPhone. You know, we're taking these yeah. selfies. We're looking at ourselves. We're we're po it's it's just a fragmented idea of something simplistic as a mirror, but I think it's the same sort of human condition. Out of that, how the human image changed. Like you, you can, I reckon, if you uh, people research it out there, but I, just a hi strange hypothesis is that if you look at um, the use of mirrors and then look at the change in fashion, the change in human technology, and the change, and I mean that in like um, ergonomics and the change in yeah. style, um, the way, uh, and the change in r literature, I reckon that you, there would be a correlation between the, that and the discovery of the mirror. Um, and I think... It would have to be. It would have to be, right? <laughs> it because it, to be. at one point, we're not looking at ourselves, and then at one point... We are. Yeah. So there's, must, there's, a, there's a change in the human condition. There's a change in the way that the, our brains worked. And we're going through that now. Yeah, isn't that just fucking terrifying? All these things mm. that we're making that are a novelty to begin with. Like like cinema even. That was for magic tricks when mm. it first came out. Yeah, totally. Uh, and like all these things we just make as a bit of a novelty and then they just kind of like, cha like physically change our brain mm. like, over time. That's fucked up <laughs> yeah no well there's there's it's i don't know if it's fucked up but i think it's interesting like because it, you know we're we're afraid of change we're afraid of change but change has happened before and, it'll, yeah. and change will keep changing it'll keep happening um yeah, pulp novels were the devil when they first came out like before radio and shit yeah like ev everything's the devil well there's there's course. but there's patterns to things of course yeah, yeah that's what i mean that's right there's, there's there's patterns to things like um it's usually the sex industry that gets onto a medium first though so radio um and and voice recording because they're basically astronauts yeah <laughs> it's all sassy right and then you got the you know even the printed book right yeah. When they started printing books, the main books that they were selling at one point uh, are, uh, you know, raunchy books. Yeah. Because that's pop, sex pop sells. Boobs. <laughs> yeah, but that's it. Sex sells, man. Um, but, you know, naughty books are the first books that they were... Like, you've got science books and people were sharing knowledge. Yeah. Or religion. Like, the, there's a whole bunch of yawn in there for a lot of people. Where's the sex, man? You know, they're looking yeah. for the sex. Um, and that, that, that could be found in film, you know, the, um, uh, porn theatres. And VHS. Fuck, I knew a guy that And certainly the internet. Theater. Certainly the internet is built off foundations from pornography. Oh, no. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> oh, dude. You ring me now. Oh. <laughs> I usually have everything muted. I'm the worst. I tell everyone to turn their fucking phone off. I didn't actually tell you to turn your phone off. I just assumed you did. You know? I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's where everyone just assumes you did. But I fucking didn't. So busy. <laughs> Anyway. You're, you're a real piece of shit, you know that? Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, real piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> what the fuck was I talking about? I've lost my train of thought. I've lost my pagey train of thought. Boobs in books. Oh, boobs in books, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> magazines. Um, in, the internet, man. It, you know, a lot of it was sold on sex. It's always yeah. the first. It's always the first cab off the uh, off the rank, man. Like, that's what the first thing that they sell is is tits. Yeah. It's the first thing that they do. Um, yeah, that's in everything, man. Everything. It's, it's, 
kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. Just um, to see how base our needs are. <laughs> yeah, but then, it, then it's usually followed by violence. Yeah. It's usually followed by violence. So it'd be sex and violence that sells. Yeah. Um, and then, then it fragments again. It becomes about different human conditions. Why aren't they, like, yeah. really... I, I don't know. Like, I've... I could be wrong. I, I'm sure I heard somewhere that in the brain, uh, at least in in male, in the males of, the, of our species, that violence and sex are very close mm. together, like physically within the brain. Yeah, where they're located. Yeah. 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 Well, that's what they. Um, no, okay, to really sidetrack, that's where they say that a deficiency in people's brains that are serial killers and sociopaths is where yeah. it, it, that's all messed up. It's where it's overlapped. It's synesthetic in nature. Yeah. Is it messed up though? <laughs> yeah, well, it's just something like, that happens. Humans 2.0. <laughs> yeah, no, but the why? Are they, you know, I'm not. I'm not defending serial killers here. But why is the wolf the wolf? You know, yeah. why is why is the turtle the turtle? You yeah, know? Th- like there's some serial killers you look at and go, oh, like they're kind of force majeure. And then other ones, you go, you're a creepy fuck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you were doing. You like really calculated stuff. And I'm like, you look at Dharma. It's kind of like doesn't seem like he knew what he was doing. <laughs> he was no, just... he was just... No one... He was just... Everyone was so blind yeah. that they couldn't see him. Yeah. But, you know, and then you got quite cunning serial killers out there. But, yeah... Um, yeah, I think... Uh, but the change in the human mind is, is, is evident and it's measured. Yeah. It is definitely measured. Um, you could, they are noticing a change um, from uh, readers because we... As, re- as people that read... Um, in especially in Western culture, you read left to right and turn the page yeah. from uh, right to left. So read left to right, page right to left. Yeah. So your brain will start to um, scan the world that way and everything. Ah, for real. Yeah, yeah. There's there's parts of your brain that will do that. Like um, uh, when you're driving along, you will look left and right. You yeah, know, true. You know, or um, and they even say in like uh, to get really um, nerdy about it, some um, in uh, patrol techniques when you're at war is mm. scan right to left because you'll see more. Because as you scan left to right, your brain fills in blanks. Yeah. So go against your reading pattern to slow that process down to scan more of the terrain. That's excellent. Right. So we understand this is the human condition. Yeah. But that human condition has changed and it's gone back to an old school way of um, uh, tablet reading. Because before books, we had tablets where we will read up and down. Yeah, like scrolls and parchment yeah, but, and shit. Yeah, but we're yeah. thinking in a linear yeah. form rather than a compressed left to right page form. It's not in a little hard drive, it's yeah. in a scroll. And our brains work differently in that. Now we're back to scrolls. Because if you look at a Facebook news feed, you're not turning pages, you're scrolling. You know what I've noticed about the Facebook news feed? It's kind of weird and gross. Mm. Like, I'll, I'll be thinking you know, different thoughts while I'm flicking up, not to do with like what I'm reading, and then I'll lose a thought and I'll find if I scroll back to where I was, I'll regain the memory of what I was thinking about. Wow. And I, I wonder if there's like some weird science <laughs> No, there that. is, man. There, there, but there is. There is totally science behind that. It's like you're rewinding your brain and you're like is there something you're cool scrolling you back with that like <laughs> you're scrolling back yeah and um and there's a polyrhythmic thing that is also happening with people's minds at the moment because we think you know left to right is a linear thinking yeah but scrolling has different especially in a in a, a digital space because you can swipe left and swipe right there's different dimensions mm. to that so we're multi-dimensional thinkers now yeah which is um I don't know. I, I guess, in my opinion, that's where some erratic ideas come from. Um, yeah, it could do. But um, my fear is about where the internet is going. Not where it come from, not where it was, not where it is, but where it's going. Because that's the, that's the important question, I think. Yeah. Well, I, I, wonder, like, I wonder if we kind of plateaued. Like, it's, like it's not going to get any better. But is it just going to get strongly more banal? Mm. Well, that's what I mean. Like things have gotten topsy turvy. Um, uh, you know, uh, a pres- uh, you know, a, a, a so, you know, a so-called leader of the free world, whatever that's supposed to mean. But mm. you know, our, our allies' leader is another way. That's the way I'd put it. Our allies' leader, yeah, um, is you know sitting on the shitter at three a.m. With a fucking brain fart, spewing it on the internet. I kind of love that we live in a world where that's happening. <laughs> yeah, but that's fucking weird, dude. This guy is a fucking television host. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 
<laughs> but how cool is it that we're living in an age where, yeah, like a president is just taking a shit uh, or making a sandwich and they're like, you know what, fuck this whoever guy I'm talking about mm. like, on his list of people that he hates and just, yeah, just unabashedly just... Yeah, it's real high school shit, like, what a nasty woman and shit. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's cool that we, <laughs> well, that to we do, live in that world that it's so ridiculous. But to look at the other side of it, man, I think he, uh, when I was looking at uh, Trump content through over the last crazy four fucking years, I mean, even leading up to the fucking election was crazy. So we had our elections on at the same time. It lasted six weeks. Their election process and went on for like what felt like a fucking year. Yeah, it was a fucking long time. They've somehow made the Westminster system more convoluted. Yeah, which, um, which is really hard to do because it's really congratulations. convoluted. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, it's really convoluted. <laughs> it's like yeah, there's a layer on top of their Westminster system, but yeah. it's done in not a popular vote. It's done in a um, what do they call it? College. Yeah, the electoral college. Vote. college. Yeah, electoral college. Yeah, fuck. I, I don't know what I'm talking about with it, but what, like, I imagine I don't. I don't live there, but what I, what I garner from it is that they like, what they vote for who's gonna vote. Yeah, super delegates. Yeah. Man. It's fucking weird, man. It, it, we already get like scrape the scum off the top of the barrel here without that it's got to be way worse yeah, yeah. <laughs> no but nonetheless though like i don't know i just i was watching i was watching trump and uh they ed- he was heavily edited in different spectrums of the news oh for real yeah man if you watch his full speeches he actually um sounds articulate in many many fashions you know and, 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 and i that say that to be right i say that to people and they say <laughs> that they, they do um, the, he's. He, I've um, heard him make some quite inspirational speeches that are even above the, the, the guild of um, you know those that have followed him in the last twenty years. Yeah. Um, I'd say like you know stuff where you go, oh yeah, good on you, man. That's that was heartfelt. Even a broken clock though, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that 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 does strike with you. You do go, yeah. That there is there is elements to that, but I just I, I guess what I'm pointing out is not, I'm not pointing out that um, uh, Trump is a good dude. I'm saying that he was heavily edited, um, and it was wasn't hard, mm. wasn't hard to edit that man. <laughs> like he gave them plenty of plenty but of rope doing to what tie he knots. He didn't have the faculty to do within his brain. Like he's just got this fucking diarrhea, and they've gone. You know what? Like we'll do his brains work and mm. cut these bits out, and then mash together the core thing of what he's trying to say. Mm. Wonder if that was the deal. No, or they were just like dude is batshit. In no, I reckon I, I've always thought this. I always thought, um, regardless of what you think of the man. You know, being a buffoon to a, a business person that was good at running scams to up stock while buying mm. them as they were cheap, right? Um, think of it, think of it, um, uh, what you like. But there was parts that he did get. He did get the job. He did get the job. Yeah. Like he did get there. He did get like he did take their presidency and 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 use it. Like talk about Russian collusion, all this sort of stuff. I don't think that Andy Baring. I think it. Really, what it comes down to is the despondency of everybody, of going, everything is fucked. Well, I'm, I'm, give th- give this guy a go and see what happens. Or maybe it's a bit of a middle finger as well. Like if you guys can't do it, deal with that. <laughs> Just and poke then, him out on a stage with yeah, a stick. There, that's what you get. And then for four years, you're going to learn your lesson, then get back yeah. to me. You know, maybe there's a bit of an element of that because we've been stiffed and stuck it, and like, we've been it has been stuck to us. Um, all the way. And I think COVID has had this strange effect on everyone. Mm. And, and, and you know, um, people on uh, the pension or people on uh, unemployment got more money during COVID. Yeah. And people that were in businesses that were at risk of collapsing were supported with employment. Yeah. Employment funding. Everyone else had to fucking do it for themselves and either succeeded or failed in those endeavours. So things have blossomed out of that and things were just totally annihilated. Yeah, you see, there was this vast, like, gulf between, the, you know, classes during that. And it, kind of, it was kind of in flux as well. Mm. And I, I saw a lot of chatter about people saying, 
oh, you know, these, these people are getting more now than I get or more than they did get and that's not fair, I should get more. And, like, but the, and then getting angry at those people, like, you shouldn't get angry at them for getting more. You mm. should be, you, you, you're very right in wanting more, but you shouldn't be getting angry at them for getting more. You should mm. be angry at the people not giving you enough. Yeah, like it doesn't make sense to shit on someone that's already been shit on just because they've you know they've yeah because they got a break yeah like they flipped the coin it's gone their way for once yeah totally um oh, that's why I got, I got I got this crazy like coming onto the subject right I've got a fucking strange theory man yeah I've got this strange kooky theory lately you know I want to share it with you I want to share and see what you think okay um if you look at um uh, signs around especially western sydney at the moment mm. uh, there's you know those big um digital signs on the sides of roads yeah yeah. Some of them say, um, drug, dr- drugged driving, stop it, dot, 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 or cop it. All right? So, they're going after drugged driving. I don't know why they're telling me that. They're not my real dad. Yeah, yeah. No. But nonetheless, <laughs> but this is something like, because, you know, you say slow down, you know, these yeah, other, yeah. you know, wear a seatbelt. Yeah, there's other public announcements and there's other blitzes that they target, but they've been going, I've noticed, especially hard on drugged drivers. Yeah. And so, I looked, I did a bit of research and I had to look into some of the statistics. There hasn't been a lot of fatalities that are related to drug use they're yeah. all related to alcohol or speed actually the highest is speeding yeah if any if anyone's being honest they can admit that that it's you, you can have whatever whatever agenda you like but but saying someone smoked a joint like two weeks ago mm. and then you get your license taken off you does not make any fucking sense That's at right. all it does not make sense and the, and the equipment and the tests that they're using uh, are not accurate enough uh, to judge when someone has has used drugs mm. like they're not testing for impairment they're no. testing for traces within the blood yeah whether is, you've done it, whether you've done something illegal they're not tracing to see how well yeah. you can perform at something it should, if they want to test for like impairment or, or if someone how long ago it was someone had you know drugs by all means that that will keep the road safe and keep other people safe mm. but but yeah, like these people that... Because I've read a fair bit about it for a while. Because mm. there was that one guy that finally got off. The first guy that got off because uh, a police officer told him, two weeks, if, if you don't smoke for two weeks, you can drive. That's okay. And that was that was recorded that the cop said that. Mm. And so then he smoked. Two, week, two weeks, maybe three weeks later, he went he went driving and he got caught. And it returned a, you know, a trace of marijuana. Mm. And he went to court. And his solicitor just showed this, you know, this this document saying the police officer said and look it's been two weeks and it could be evidenced uh, then they went okay well we've got to let him off and that's all that's set a mm. precedent uh, it's it's really fucked up i've got a crazy theory about it what a crazy theory about covid and uh drug testing on the roads so you want to hear definitely want to hear, hear this <laughs> right okay okay so um because there's more money for people like we were talking about it before, right? If you've got a spare moment, you'll go partying. Because man's a party yeah. animal, right? Especially under the pressure of being home with your kids while you're during COVID because you're doing homeschooling. Now they're back at school. You've got some extra money in the bank. You're like, yeah. um, I'm in a split relationship where the kids are at the uh, other parent's house. And I've got this weekend off. And Getting torn up. That's right. I've got 500 <laughs> bucks just sitting there. What am I going to do, right? So... <laughs> You know, humans being humans, they go out and do these things. Mm. But that the problem with that is that they're not spending that money, that extra money that's supposed to be circulating in the economy is not going the direction that the government wants. Yeah, true. So to encourage people to spend, they go, well, stop going out partying on the weekend because mm. we'll scare you into that by loss of license, you know, um, a blemish on your record. Yeah. To go, make, go shopping. Do that instead. Go shopping, go yeah. buy shit, because the money that you're spending on, on your on your weed is not going to where it's supposed to be going. Because it's going, you know, onto someone's mortgage somewhere. I'd imagine. Not and that it, whose fault is that? Yeah, the people that don't legalize recreational use. That's what I'm saying. And this can is ridiculous. Highly tax it, and people would still go, yeah, mad. It's fucking childish, man. Yeah, it is fucking childish. Yeah. Um, you can you can strap yourself to another human being and jump out of a perfectly good, good aeroplane, but you can't buy a stick of weed. Yeah. It's just weird. 
It's just fucking weird, dude. No, I reckon you're onto something there. That's, you know, but- <laughs> that makes sort of sense. They're like, oh, you know, little Johnny's going and buying a stick. We wanted to go get a flat screen, innit? Yeah, yeah, That's go, why yeah. we gave him the money. That's why you gave him the money. We begrudgingly gave him that money to go get a flat screen. And yeah. He's gone and bought drugs with it. Yeah. What a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. Should be should be buying a fucking dryer, you know? Yeah. Go to Harvey Norman. And buy yourself a fucking rug, you know? That's what that's Go, go spend it on booze and then get into punch on and then end up in hospital and, and drain more money out of yeah, the economy yeah. Yeah. instead of sitting in your house eating three more cheeseburgers than you should have. Yeah, but that's what they want, man. That's what I think. That's what I think. I, I just noticed that there was an uptake. I'd like to hear from other people in different suburbs about it, actually. like Yeah, it would be interesting. Because I, I know, because I was driving around the city yeah. for, uh, for quite a, um, a couple of weeks and inside and outside of Sydney, I've been driving. Mm. And I only noticed it in our area, and I thought, interesting. Why? Why are they blitzing here? Yeah. And what's that all about? I've and I noticed thought, it more here than in the Blue Mountains mm. as well. I, th- I think it's because they're just like they like parents that have had enough of their kid mm. just pissing their money up the wall. They're like, oh, it's a Blue Mountains. Just let them do drugs. That's but that, fine. But that's they're what I think. Do that. That's what I think they're doing. And, yeah. and if they're going to do that, make sure you do that on the North Shore as well. Because if you... you I, yeah, if you want to snort fuck tons of cocaine and shit and get real aggressive and, uh, and mm. cause fucking problems and give money to actual really bad drug dealers mm. and, and drug networks and stuff, that's fine because you've got a Merc and you've got some coke. That's, yeah, that's all. Go and, go and blitz in other neighbourhoods and then tell me another story. I just, yeah. I, just, I just hope that's the case. I hope they are doing it in other places. I'm not yeah. saying that they're not. I'm just saying that, that my experience... Experience late, uh, my, and, and anecdotal in nature as it is, I admit that. But um, I just thought, I just thought, how, how crazy is that? Why, why target something with such a low percentage of fatality? With it's such it's vigor, hits. with such vigor, it's the classic hits of the government hitting people in low socioeconomic areas for shit that they're doing that's not hurting anyone mm. <laughs> because they're they're the low. It's the lowest hanging fruit that they can fuck with. Mm. And get some revenue while they're in the process, you know? That's it. And because on on large, Australia's not going to give a fuck about some bogans sitting around in Blacktown, Penrith, Mount Drew, what the fuck ever, Mm. uh, when when someone whinges about it. But if you hear, you know, someone, some investment banker from somewhere that's, you know, got a nice family and they give 20 grand to charity a year, you Mm. hear about them doing drugs and their area being fucked up, like all those traces of coke they find in the sewage. That's right, that's what I'm saying. The sewage sewage systems run under every household. They don't don't give a fuck about that. They run under every household, though. Yeah. You know? And I guarantee you're right. If you measure that across the city, they they know the numbers. Yeah, they know where it's coming from. They know exactly where it's coming from. Yeah, but they know that people would listen to those people because those people, uh, you know have more education they, they they come from more affluent areas mm. they have they have access to platforms where they could coerce people to listening to them and so they're not going to fuck with them as much as they're going to fuck with you know some kid with tns mm. down in fucking st mary's because no one's going to listen to him mm. and what he has to say yeah yeah no i, I just i might the pessimism in me though thinks that it is um, classes, uh, classism, classism no, war. Is. It, you know, it's it's classism war. Because times are tough and you've got to go, well, we've got to squeeze somewhere. Yeah, exactly. You've got to flog some horse. We'll, mm. we'll, you know what? Fuck it. We'll flog the donkey instead. Mm. And that's where they're going to. Yeah. No, I th- yeah, but that's the other thing. Like, you know, a couple of years back, they were going after. Um, remember, they had the um, incident into the dogs. You know, the the, uh, the dog races, yeah. where they were blood. You know, there was uh, some of the, um, poor operators that were, were that were being bad. They had like possums on them and stuff. Yeah, yeah, they're blood. They're blooding. They're blooding uh, greyhounds. But you know, you know, they shoot a horse at the Melbourne Cup every second year, or if not every year. Yeah. You know, the most prestigious race in the world. Yeah. Um, and Chantel kills a horse. is fine. <laughs> yeah, no one's going after the horse racing. Chantel you know? with her broken heel pissing in the gutter is fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Yeah. I, th- I just noticed these patterns in things uh, like that. Oh, well, maybe it's, you know, don't get me wrong, uh, confirmation bias. And I did, I did, yeah, as I said... That absolutely comes into it. Um, sure. pe- I'm pessimistic about that. And that's why I say I'm pessimistic about these things because of confirmation bias. But... Um, they are they, look it's hard to look at those things and say that they're not there um, and, and you know it, it's hard to, to ignore them I just yeah I, I, this whole idea of um, you know uh, fighting against 
our suburbs is it, it should be a shared burden is my point like we go through these yeah. things and, we, and look we all know it's tough like everyone does it tough that's why i think it's weird who, who was won and who was lost out of covid it's fucking hilarious to me like in a lot of ways yeah, like absolutely um you know the the oh, it, it, oh, I, I love it man i love it that like uh, you know these people uh, that were getting underpaid in gig culture Mm. ended up getting more money on this job keeper that they would get at work I'm like fucking excellent i'm not saying that that's sustainable uh, economically over long term but like that's because the economics are at fault not these mm. people so it's really good to see someone just win out you know like a dog coming right from behind yeah that's it <laughs> but yeah but i think it's a bit of karma though like they should have they should have upped new start Sean ages Florida ago is is years ago great. yeah and i think you know it's a bit of it's a bit of um uh, it's a bit of karma in there i think like but, man i i was on i i i worked on and off like in, in like temp roles growing up mm. so I was shit at everything and i had no work like i had i had no want to work i was you know whatever uh, but then now now i've been working for like um, a fair long while and i'm paying tax i'm like i don't care if they sit on their ass and they're getting my money mm. i don't give a fuck because you know how many rich fucking pieces of shit uh, are gonna serve a couple of terms in parliament doing nothing voting against my interests and then for the rest of their life they're getting my fucking tax dollars man that little shithead that wants to sit on his ass and smoke bongs all day give him my money i don't mm. give a fuck mm. like i i i I would much rather that. Mm. Yeah, me too. But at the same time, like, I, I, this is where I get torn on these things, man. Um, you know, they go after, you know, the government, um, and both sides of government, going after, um, you know, uh, people on Newstart or people on the Dole. And, uh, but they're the biggest Dole bludgers of them all, man. You Absolutely. Know, if you get a job, if you get a job, yeah. pay me. If you, get a, if you sell your car, pay me. If you buy a car, yeah. pay me. Uh, and the majority of people, like on like social security uh, any type of benefits though the majority the vast majority are trying to get work and mm. legitimately do not want to be on, on these things they mm. don't but the narrative is that they're just these lazy fucking pieces of shit yes yeah, some people are lazy some people are lazy in work yeah totally but the like who like anyone that's ever been on Centrelink, anyone uh, has not gone that is the exact right amount of money I need to, mm. to feel fulfilled. Yeah, Not yeah. one fucking person, man. Like, mm. So if someone can get a job, they're going to get a job. And there's not enough jobs going around. That is just straight fact. Mm. That What is it now? It's like uh, like 20, 22 or, or 12, one or the other. For every one role, there's that many people going for these jobs. Mm. And that's not something new. This is not some new COVID shit. No, it's it was already understood. It's under always been like that. Mm. And being in and out of the job market myself, like uh, before finding gainful work that made me feel fulfilled, so mm. I've never left it. Before that, doing gig culture stuff, being in and out of it, you see that over the years it has gotten worse because you're the one that's looking for work, not too bad, easy enough. Then you back off, then you look for some more work, it's a little bit harder, and it is fucked up. It's really hard. Yeah. Right. And we're just shitting on these people in media, and we're shitting on them in, in you know, public speaking sp spaces. It's it's horrible. Yeah. And I'd this COVID thing made it worse. Just like, these are the people that for once got enough money to live a, a decent life week by week, mm. and we're going to shit on them for it. Yeah. No, that's uh, that's what I mean. It's a bit it's a bit harsh on them to go, hey, you know, um, you got to be what's their phrase? They would use a phrase like you got to be uh, a lifter, not a leaner. Yeah, that shit is. And man. Then, you know, uh, that that comes that's from someone that's never, uh, you know, never never tasted fucking desperate. If you're saying that shit, you've never. Yeah. Ever tasted it. You've always been provided for if you think that way. Well, it's coming out of Scott Morrison's mouth and growing up, anyone that knew him and people have attested to this, people that knew him growing up said he was this weird little bloke that would hang in the corner of the room that just ha had designs on being like... Shitting themselves at Macca's, yeah. <laughs> uh, <but, laughs> I'm not going to give him shit for that. Everyone's done that. <laughs> we all shit at For me, it was at KFC, you know, yeah. I just, uh, you know... Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, and like, and th so this guy's the, and like, 
you know, and, and who was the other politician that was going off about raising uni fees, but there's pictures of him, like, rallying at uni for no uni Oh, fees that's uh, Christopher Pine. Yeah. Yeah. All these fucking goons. Got a free man. education, too. Yeah. They didn't pay hex. The, these goons, man, it's ridiculous. I'm, they're the last people I want to hear say lifters and leaners and shit. Mm. People, like, in the working class, like my father, who injured themselves at work and have to fight the rest of their life with insurance companies... Mm. Because and it's not an uncommon story no. uh, that you you know you give your life to the company. It's this old fucking silly old bloke thing. Yeah, die, do. die in the coal mine because it was yeah. the right thing to do. Wear a yeah. helmet. Nah, she'll be right. Mm. Uh, it's nah, she won't be right. And the, the, these people should be the ones saying lifters and leaners, not the fucking assholes that are on a glorified new start. Mm. Like it's ridiculous. It was a, yeah, it was a security consort and a yeah. uh, free travel anywhere. That five grand that during the fires uh, that that Scott Morrison paid for a private jet to Murdoch's Christmas party during the fires, five grand a taxpayer dollars. What's wrong with that though? Motherfucker. <laughs> well, he didn't take me. <laughs> he didn't take me. <laughs> You know. I heard they didn't have Coopers on yeah, top. Yeah. It's a horrible place. They shouldn't have paid five grand for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or Bronwyn Bishop getting her fucking helicopter. Yeah, and, man, you know, she they, copped they, it. He he didn't cop shit. Yeah, going on holiday. Yeah. Going on holidays. I remember he coming out, though, he did say, you know... And by the way, you're like, you know, I may be shitting on Morrison at the moment, but if, and I'll tell you what, if... Uh, what's the old mate that was going against him? What was his fucking name? Shorten. Shorten. He was great. Oh, I don't know about that. I'd he, be I'd be bagging he, out Shorten as well. He he had some pretty good policy, man. Like that got misrepresented by media. Like, uh, oh, death taxes and there was no death tax. Of course not. Uh, and also like closing that loop in negative gearing and even even like uh, Paul Keating spoke out against it. And Paul Keating's a pretty people both sides of the fence can go. Paul Keating knows what the fuck he's doing. He's yeah, man. Day. Yeah, he's Mister Float the Dollar. He, yeah. did, he did a good job. And he was saying like. We did not do this. Nobody did this, this negative gearing. We didn't set it up for people to mm. get tax refunds when they haven't paid tax. That is a fucking loophole. Shorten says, we, we've got to close that. Bam, straight away. People are not like blood in the water. Mm. Uh, and then, like, he, they had, of course, like, I don't think they're great. I don't know, but they're politicians. Uh, they're not great people, mm. but they're not they're not completely altruistic. Uh, but but some great policy that, that Labor had under Bill Shorten, mm. like, after they didn't get voted in, they just dropped it all. Oh, and so the lesson they learned was, you know what, just don't have great policy. Like, which was dumb. I'd rather them lose, like, every fucking term on great policy. They lost on franking credits. Do you know how many f people are affected by franking credits? Oh, like, <laughs> fucking no one. Like a big fuck all. Did like, you see the old fuckers lined up at Centrelink going, where's my franking credits? Yeah. <laughs> Like, not knowing what the fuck a franking credit is, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, all that stuff. Oh, don't worry. I had to explain to me twice. Because, you know, like, I was drunk both times someone had described it to me. <laughs> but I got the gist. It's basically <laughs> returning tax on your fucking uh, already taxed environment fucking yeah. uh, returns on owning stock. Yeah. Franking credit. Now, and you get to do a tax deduction against that because the business already paid tax. But here's the really ironic part about a franking credit, as I've learned. Mm. Most taxes are, uh, most companies minimise their tax and don't fully pay all of their fucking tax. Yep. So that 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 franking credit is actually based off a figure that's not entirely true. Yeah, man. <laughs> It's yeah, falsified like, in a way. It wasn't like when it first came in, wasn't the idea for this legislation so people weren't getting taxed twice from foreign markets? Yeah, that's right. And instead, we've used it to give people money they did not pay in tax. Mm. Give people give them tax money. refunds. Free money. They didn't. Yeah, yeah, it's free money. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. Yeah. For something that, like, something that rudimentary, where if a government wants to change that for the better of everyone... For that to get twisted into this weird fucking tool of, you know, death tax or whatever. But the government, the government come out and say, though, you can't be double taxed, right? Because this is a double taxed argument. Why should it be taxed? You can't be double taxed. Yeah. Um, so have, look, at, look at the journey of your super money. 
<laughs> I would rather not. No, no, but let's just look at like something really simple. After That's a simple GMC, idea. I don't want to see what my super looks yeah, like. Yeah, no, but like let's look at how many environments that money has been in and how many times it's touched the bill of tax. Yeah. And it's not once. Your it is the journey of your super money is taxed three times mm. before it gets to you. Yeah, and then you've got GST. And then when you spend the money, you've got to pay tax. Yeah. So it actually technically is, and probably more, um, if you bought petrol yeah. and cigarettes, you've been taxed on that super money. Because if you're still smoking and like driving a car by the time well, you're look, 70, I go, you're doing all right. Hey, cigarettes and petrol, that's, that's my <laughs> Well, what else weekend. do you buy? <laughs> um, if you're trying to buy cigarettes at the moment, get out of fucking loan. Um, <laughs> shit. Talk about being fisted by the man. Wow. It's kind of cool that people get taxed for getting cancer. Don't get cancer! Like, it's excellent. (laughs) Fuck you, I will get cancer. I'll pay more for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah, the biggest fucking scam on the planet. Yeah, it's amazing. It's that petulance of humans that I love. Yeah, I'm (laughs) determined. I'm determined. No, fuck it, I'll roll them then. I'll roll them. (laughs) Most people, that, I've, not, I've watched people that are smokers out there just fucking crack it and just go, oh, I'll just learn how to roll. Yeah. Yeah, you've been smoking bloody darts for 20 years, now you're going to learn how to roll? Well, we've got people, I do disability support, and I've I've got customers that because of their, you know, their constrained budgets, mm. uh, they've got dignity of risk, and some of them are really old, and they smoke their whole life, they're like, you're going to keep smoking, they look like, you know, they've got to buy rollies now and shit, or we've got to give them like five cigarettes a day. <laughs> So you got to you got to dose their cigarettes. Yeah, their dosages yeah, yeah, essentially. Like, yeah, like medicine. Yeah, it's yeah. it's yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, wow. And I think of like all the people that aren't living in a care environment that are doing that, and it's, that's excellent. <laughs> well, I'm a drinker and smoker now. If you if I don't drink, I don't smoke. Yeah. And this has had a you know a, a, some negative effects, some positive effects. Yeah. Because if you're really disciplined, you go, well, we'd have to have a drink then to have this cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't go against what I said. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> it goes from being flirtatious with alcohol to becoming married to it. So you got to... <laughs> Uh, and it's like you know it's like your parents marriage like oh fine fine oh have a beer we'll do this for the cigarettes (laughs) speaking of which I'm gonna go get a beer I've got uh, 20 minutes left of this podcast alright oh beauty hey do you have cigarettes I fucking do can we have one yeah uh, in 20 minutes yeah cool I might as well get I don't want to stop start the record yeah cool wait this isn't going in is it (laughs) no (laughs) No, no, we don't. We don't. No, we. I don't put this bit in. <laughs> you fucking want a durry? Yeah. You want a fucking durry? Yeah, mate. Yeah. 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 Fucking Nolan here. Oh man. Yeah. No. Like I'm the same. Like drinking beers and it's like. <sighs> yeah. No. I need a cigarette. Like drinking and smoking are quite exclusive. I need it. I used to need um a coffee and a cigarette. But I've I, only just started drinking coffee after like fucking 12 years again. I have one in the morning and like a cigarette with it and it's fucking amazing. Yeah, no. I've noticed how cigarette. much I don't yell at like co-workers first thing in the morning. Yeah. I, no, I, I find it's better to yell at co-workers. It's better for you. Well, yeah, I do. I do it. <laughs> I do. I yell at co-workers all the time. Well, not, not yell. Just talk down to. I think that's more... Dude, that's worse. Yeah. <laughs> so Just much talk worse. down to them. You know, but, uh, no, but I do it in, in a digital space, you know, like, yeah. um, you know, as previously discussed. Like a coward. No, man, I, I'm fucking... <laughs> email, you could be quite, you know, caustic, right? Because, like, because you got to talk to these people in person later. Oh, yeah, no, that, yeah, that's heavy. And then you just be all nice. Yeah. It's, it becomes creepy really quickly. Like, because you... <laughs> As previously discussed, I find this inappropriate and it's not acceptable. <laughs> All right, so this is how I open a sentence. <laughs> I've, my man, working in like when I was doing customer service shit, like the best thing you can do in an email is like, as I already discussed. Yeah, that's yeah, previously that discussed. Is such a you stupid fuck already said that. <laughs> how many? Oh, it's another way. Another way of saying it is how many times do I have to tell you? Yeah, man. All yeah. Right. Excellent. Um, I started a conversation today on email. No, no, sorry, mid conversation. So the third email in, I've gone. Um, quite frankly, <laughs> <laughs> when you start with quite frankly, it's literally 
fuck off, this is the truth. I reckon before they shot Tupac, some dude just went, quite frankly. Quite frankly. <laughs> oh, man. Also, oh, imagine, imagine, though, imagine Biggie Smalls, right? Yeah. Notorious, right? And Tupac doing a fucking jewel show. That is a good thing to think about, but in my dreams, it's usually them doing a 69. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> I've got a photograph of that. Think of the logistics I think of that. Because like. we're going to release a photograph that it all went down. <laughs> mm. Yeah, no, do think of the logistics of that. Um, it's quite disturbing. <laughs> But yeah, so what, I don't know. What do we get out of the show? You are a a, a sketcher that um, uh, and that we have talked about. You know the proto cyborg um, that will be the man in the machine because we're in a thing that we don't know what it is mm. because the government is fucking with us in ways that they shouldn't be. But you have the right to be you as long as you're not hurting anyone else. Yeah, look, there, there you go. That's good. That's a good paraphrase. <laughs> We could say that, or we could say this is just like where we're at the pub and we just talk some fucking shit. Yeah, no, it is, it is. Like, man, no, I absolutely do enjoy talking shit with you, Scott. Like, no, um, it's same. Like every time we're at the pub having a beer, I'm like, I just want to hear Roscoe say something. Man, no, you always, you always give me a different um, perspective, and I really appreciate that because I am so up in my fucking head, man. Oh, I'm the same. Man. I'm very much up in my head. Um, I, I, and in fact, um, I trust, I try to be a better listener. Uh, I'm so up in my head. I could be, as people are talking, sometimes I venture off into three conversations and then sometimes yeah. one will dominate and I have to be very aware of that because it's rude. It's rude to do that mm. and then to try, you know, I, I like to stay focused in the conversation. But it's something that happens in me organically because someone, sometimes when people are talking, it's not what they're saying is boring, it's that it's triggering things. Yeah, and me to start thinking, and I go, oh, I really want to think about that. No, yeah, I get you. Like, absolutely. Mm. I, do, I do the same thing. Like, I seem really aloof sometimes, people have said, mm. and other times just downright fucking rude, <laughs> and, like, I don't mean to be. Mm. It's just, uh, you, you need to, like, keep stuff, like, at arm's length. Mm. And you need time to, like, chew on these ideas that, like, because it's, like, the more interesting someone is when I'm talking to them, the mm. more I need to chew on those ideas that they're setting off in my head. Mm. And I like I feel that's the opposite of rude, but it presents as rude. It yeah. comes across as rude, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's uh, actually um, um, endearing because you're going, I'm liking what you're saying, and I'm, yeah. and I'm, and I'm, 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 I'm soaking that in, and it's actually stimulating with what I'm. Yeah, and I kind of respect you, so I want to think about it before I open my mouth, which is very yeah. uncharacteristic for me. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like no, when I'm really into someone and what they're talking about, I'm like, I'll just be really quiet because I, I, I want to kind of think about what the fuck they're saying. Yeah, me too, man. Me too. And you do that to me. Yeah. Um, so that's what, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, all but, right, let's make out now. All right, let's, uh, let's, uh, <laughs> let's play Little Spoon, Big Spoon. <laughs> but before that, we've got a scissors, paper, rock. <laughs> Me. Yeah, I think uh, that's where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goddamn! Jesus, Jesus wept. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I yeah, I just think, um, man, we're in a strange time um, in the world. But I think what we've got to recognise, man, I think this is really important, is that we're in a cool time in the world. It's very cool. Yeah. Like um, infant mortality has never been so low. Life expectancy has never been so high. There's never been so many people on the planet. Longevity is increasing. Yeah. Um, air quality is getting better. Water is getting better. Our communication means are getting better. I just think that we're just... There's this shadow uh, negative economy that's running out there. And our fears are that the that the, it will overtake the positive. I think there's always these catalysts for like... Uh, like you, you hear every year like, oh, it's the hottest day since whenever or the coldest day since whenever. whenever. And I think like everything generally is like that where like today there were unprecedented less people getting, it's unprecedented yeah there was less people getting shot in the fucking head and stuff like but we never capitalize on that like it's supposed to be a catalyst for to like jump off and make shit better we mm. don't do it we're all basically petulant fucking lazy toddlers uh, yeah <laughs> like, i think we are we're constantly like testing boundaries of what we can get away with instead of testing the boundaries of, uh, of what we can improve uh, and it's it's fucking nuts uh, that we can ever like 
yeah, like during COVID, we actually came together a fair amount. Of course, there were some fucking, you know, monkey wrenches in the works. But, but at, you know, by lunch. A couple of good Zoom calls, though. We yeah. Had, we, had, we had a couple of good Zoom calls. awesome. Well, the first two. <laughs> I've had heaps of them. I've done like. Oh, really? Near 100 of them, yeah. Well, the, the first two, I was like. Ace, like I'm, I feel like I'm at the pub having a drink with your mates again. And mm. after two of them, like on the third one, I'm like, oh, I don't want to fucking do this. It's people on a on a computer. No, but do you know what that did for me though. Do you know what that did for me? Yeah. I I learned from doing that because like I initiated that. I remember I was like, let's get together and let's do this. And, and I, I didn't initiate it. I I I digitally did it. Yeah. Someone else came up with the idea. I can't remember who came up with the idea. They said we should do it on Zoom. I'm like, yeah, we should do it on Zoom because I do that at work all the time. Yada yada. But doing the Zoom with you guys. Um, which was a lot of fun because it was fucking hilarious. It was. And um, I got my new fez. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect timing. My fucking $300 Mike Mignola signed fez. Yeah. That went straight back into a box. I can't believe you... <laughs> Just, just, just to digress. I can't believe you bought a three hundred dollar fez. <laughs> Mike Mignola Who the fuck does that? It. Man, Mike Mignola, Hell, Hellboy, Mike Mignola signed it. I had to get it, and it was numbered. It was like one of a hundred or some shit. Yeah, it's outrageous. Big man with a fez over here. <laughs> <laughs> Big man with a fez. No, yeah, but I, I, yeah, just the, the whole Zoom process. I um, uh, took elements from that and uh, doing TV. Uh, experience and producing mm. and I put that into networking events uh, in the film community and holy fuck it was awesome uh, working with my team um, doing these networking events is so much fun but you made in the west stuff yeah man yeah, yeah, yeah. because I get, what I do is I, I set up like a room and we had like 40 people show up and you're all in the all in this zoom call and then I do like a breakaway so we put you know, a group of six into one room. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then we give them like, something to do. Zoom for ants? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But, but, no, but we give <laughs> yeah, them something yeah. to do. And then when they come back, they do a poll and they go, all right, so do you want to go out into a breakout room with two people for seven minutes? Do you want to be in a breakout room for three people and for four minutes? And then everyone votes and we That's go, all right, we're going into this breakout room. And then they come back in and then I conduct an interview with someone. So I go, I've got this filmmaker here. We're going to talk about Foley and uh, why that's relevant and how you can get it done. Um, and then we have these discussions and then we go into a breakout room and talk about what the interview was about. Yeah. And people ate this up. And we just we just did it for um, shits and giggles, man, to see what <laughs> would happen. And we had a great time. Everyone had a great time. So now we're running this event three times a year. Yeah. Where we invite, you know, hundreds of people to this space. And and I think I can see it growing to at least 100 people, 100 filmmakers in the region. And, yep. and I invite comedians, um, musicians, I invite anyone, any artist to come to this space and just check it out. Because I'd like this, people to see our format and go and replicate it's it. It's really awesome to, like, out of COVID, this, like, necessity of having to use Zoom and, and you know, stuff like that mm. yeah, has turned into something that you can use, like, that, that's going to carry on after this. Yeah, that man. Has, that has, a, like, that has a benefit outside of social distancing. That's pretty cool. Oh, dude, we did um, three years of work in one year. Um, at the start of, in March... Made in the West was looking at making its biggest profit in history, in its 10-year history. Wow. A week later, COVID hit, and we were bust. Fuck. You know, imagine, imagine that on our side, where you've climbed a mountain, the summit is there, and an asteroid hits the sun. <laughs> yeah, and, that, and it's not like, and it's not this arbitrary festival. This is, you know, this is giving voices to artists from, from Western Sydney. Yeah, man, it's a big deal. That, that it's a big is, deal for people. Yeah. Yeah. That and That would have been... Fucking harrowing. We were going pro, like full pro, like we is yeah. fully funded. Um, I can, uh, we can draw uh, correct money to the right people, um, and and really put some money into the community and some time. Yeah, it was. It was. That's where we were at. And then a week later, I, I danced through a car park in the rain <laughs> out of that meeting because out of that meeting, I was like had an umbrella with me, just people walking by. <laughs> Looking at this fucking crazy man dancing with an umbrella with his wife. Woo! Like, it was insane, right? And a week later, we got fully kicked in the balls. And yeah. we made a decision. Is this a problem or is this an opportunity? And we chose to decide there was an opportunity. Since then, we released a, a six-part series on previous content that was made in, in our entire time running a festival. Yeah. With hostings and interviews with filmmakers. That's six, sick. Six weeks, in the, six weeks into COVID. We had built that. 
By the end of COVID, we had released a film festival that had two cinemas playing the Made in the West Marathon, where we played 20 films, 23 films, and the Made in the West Gala event, VIP showing, awarded event, red carpet um, and frocks. Yeah. 20 films. And then a week after that, we did an online festival showing 28 films um, across the globe. That's huge. We did that in, th- in one year. That's huge, man. Now, we had already projected to do this in the coming years. The coming years we projected to do this. So we've released a TV series. We're about to release our third season of our next TV show about the festival, which is a talk show. Mm. Um, I've never made so many um, episodes on the podcast. Like, I've done, like... 45 episodes i think this year can you please as long as this keeps going up just grab the guy that made angst <laughs> <laughs> that is my favorite western sydney movie of all i'll check it out time. i'll totally check it out man it's got abby tucker in it it's a goth and shit they're living in like what king's cross and stuff yeah, man, I'll, I'll totally, I'll totally angst. I'll, I'll, I'll check it out, man, because we got, we got some cool, we got like some this, cool ombres, this man. This is just so you can grab him, so I can meet him and go. Can I have a hug? Oh man, we got, Do we you got, have Abby Tucker's number. Man, <laughs> we've got, we've got some cool ombres involved in this, man. We've got judges from, you know, uh, that have done major productions for like Disney and Fox. Oh wow, we got uh, Brian Brown. Uh, we've got. What are you saying Brian Brown? Doesn't he seem just like that uncle? That, He's really that cool. You really don't cool know dude. his tetchy. He might yell at you, or he might go, "Go and go get yourself a Freddo." You can't tell. Yeah, yeah. You're either, either going to be terrified of him or love him. Yeah. And um, and then both both is good. And I I know that we got some. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of really cool people, um, feature filmmakers, uh, people that have worked on Mad Max. Like we've got. That's excellent. We've got we've got some really cool people involved in this. Like the, this this festival took forty people to run it this year. Yeah, you know, and it, it started with two, two Jesus. people used to run the festival, and I was one of them. And now forty people run it. And you're like half a person. Yeah, yeah, I'm like <laughs> half the time. This is where you know, but this is where it comes back to time, because like, people yeah. go, Roscoe, how do you have the fucking time, bro? How do you fucking do all that? And I go, one number one, I've got a really good team. Mm. Number two, um, there's enough time in the day. Yeah, people will always say to you, "There's not enough time in the day," and I go, "No, there fucking is." And the reason where I get beat up about myself is because I still don't apply myself. I still don't apply myself. Oh, I'm exactly the same. All, all, all I just the don't. Stuff that I'm supposed to be excelling at, I don't excel at. Why? The, the, the older I get, the more notes I take about like my favorite painters and shit. And I, but I don't apply it. Like I'll mm. sit there just like for hours looking at this painting, going, yeah. "Okay." And look, I've 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 isolated this technique that mm. they've done. Write it down. Put it away. There's enough hours in the day, but I'm not fucking using them and that's, at all. That's that's what I. I say to people, they go, how do you get everything done? And I actually go, I'm not actually using all of my time. And I feel bad about that because I go, I could be doing more, even at this point. You look at Henry Rollins and just go, I am like an amoeba. Totally, man. (laughs) That guy does not stop. A whole bunch of dudes, man, especially someone like Henry Rollins, man. Someone who's been, uh, you know, I resonate with Henry Rollins a lot. He was a singer on stage. Oh, man, he's my favourite. Storyteller. Favourite. um, um, You know, a, a, a public speaker. Yeah. Um, he, he is a really cool dude. Just the um, raw and will that he has, the motivation. Where do you grab that fucking motivation where do you get it from? from? And I, I don't know. I just, I per- personally, I just go, there's enough time in the day. Yeah. And in fact, I'm not using all of it. I'm still not using all of it. Um, I, I, I sometimes bitch and I go, I don't have a day off. And I need a day off. And then every time a day off comes, I fill it with work. <laughs> so I go, look at all this free time. <laughs> yeah. Look at all this free time. Um, like, yeah, man, I had this really cool moment. Um, uh, I had the online festival running. My wife and I were both at the gym. She was doing the um, online... Lovely woman, by the way. Yeah, fantastic. Big shout out, Misty. Um, but, uh, yeah, she was on the, the stretch out machine. She was doing her stretches and... She was shutting down the social media sides of the online festival because it was still live for 24 hours. And it was in the last hour, the last five minutes of the festival runtime. Yeah. And uh, she was shutting down the social media and the vote for the popular film. And uh, I was shutting down all of the digital stuff. So the, you know, the, the links to watch the festival. And I was on a, you know, bench machine 
then I just stop for a minute. I'm like going to my apps on my phone, not even a computer, a phone. Mm. And I shut it down. I shut down a, you know, uh, a very expensive festival um, just from my phone. And it's fuck. That's so wacky, man. Yeah. What? And then proceeded with my set. You know, I know, I know that sounds really um, pompous and crazy, but I, like no, for someone no. that like went from not working out to working out all the time to to keep fit, and because I'm a big believer in keeping you physically fit to do all of the stuff you want to do mentally. Henry Rollins again. Yeah, you yeah. need you need to be fit. You need to you need to keep agile, and um, to do that on sitting on a bench press and and shutting down the festival after a year of absolute insane amount of work. And just um, getting back to, yeah, got to yeah. still got to increase my strength. Shitting your baby out in the field, and then continuing. To yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's that, and I just got a real kick out of that, and that's what I think we've got. COVID has made us realise that this this thing has been dormant in us, and it's awoken it, and I really see that as a reawakening. It's a it's a bit of a, rena- a renaissance that's going on at the moment. You wait, twenty twenty two is going to explode with awesomeness. Yeah. Either that, or we're going to world war. It's one of the two. Well, as long, as long as as long as the West start supporting their own artists, like uh, did you did you see that that council thing in Penrith recently? Mm. Which had some great fucking artists. Yeah, man, they're doing artists. some good work. But a, a, a lot of them weren't from West of Sydney. Yeah, see, that's what bums me out. Scott. And it's, that's it's what bums of, me it's out. It's kind of like the the West cannibalizing itself, going. Uh, and we, remember that that guy came out. And it, it was like maybe. Ten years ago, this this American guy came out. Uh, he was a professor or some fucking shit, and he went to Newtown. He was talking about do not gentrify your area because the world over, uh, the most impressive art you get, the most insightful art, and the most creative art that you get, and the most effective art you get is out of these lower socioeconomic areas. Mm. And these places need more resources, not too much. Because it's 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 nece- you know it's, you need to be hungry. It's necessity. Yeah, you need to be hungry. That, that creates it. I, I'm I'm someone who's totally witnessed this, and and I've seen it for the last ten years in film and music, and um, yeah, it's something that you got to keep hungry. It's a shame that they didn't do that internally. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because there's so there's so many great artists I know with, within Western Sydney that you know did not get a look in and like. I don't want to take away from the artists that were on there because they they were great. They of were, course, they were great artists, and they shouldn't feel bad about getting given a gig at mm. all. But but the organisers should feel bad. Yeah, but it comes down to trust. This is where this is where you run into yeah. it. I've run into this in the festival. You go well, um, you know, you know, promote this director or promote this writer, and we base it off the content. We really do. And sometimes people um, push us the other way and they go, well, why don't you support this person because of their background? You go, because that's not what we do. Yeah. But then I see, I, and the re- reflection of that is if you've got a bunch of money behind you and you want to get your product out there, you want someone that's proven. You no, that totally makes sense. You don't sense. want to gamble. Yeah, I'm not behind, like, just give it to them because they're from the area, but when it's a council initiative. I know, think a, they should. I think they should Penrith gamble. I, I, yeah. I think they should gamble. They should. When yeah. it's a Penrith council initiative, if it wasn't, you know, if it was like, you know, we need a certain product, fair enough. Mm. Uh, but but it was a Penrith council initiative. That that should have gone to, like, you know, some high school kids that, that weren't so great, that maybe would give them you know a leg up or would give them and the who knows to create some who more. knows what you get out of that who yeah, knows what absolutely. you get out of that because then you've got someone who's more focused and more targeted to it uh, but man look i'm out of time i've run out of time scott um I've, I've had an absolute fantastic conversation with you um i i no, i really have i really have um i'd love to have you back on the show it's been an absolute hoot um, but I've only got a minute 40, so I'm going to get through this really quickly. So, and, and look, guys, if you enjoyed the show, um, I've got only one episode to go this year, and then it's uh, all quits for 2020, and then I'll be back in 2021. You can find us on Spotify, Apple um, Podcasts, YouTube, of course, and Anchor. And next year, you'll find us on iHeartRadio. I'm doing a bit of a podcast upgrade, so it'll be a bit of fun. Um, I can get people back into the um, producer's chair, especially of today, the day of freedom. Uh, but once again, um, this is brought to you by Still Searching Productions, and I'd like to thank uh, once again Scott for being on the show. Thank you very much, Scott. Everyone, <laughs> um, but uh, but look, man, you've been watching the Baby Train, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> yeah, that was one of my better ones. 
I can be. I've, I've done way worse outros. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, I way worse. Good. I think. I think you did good. <laughs> I think right, you did really well. Let's go to this fucking diary. Yeah, fucking oath. <laughs>